Welcome back to the shop. I'm messing around with this machine. It's one of the most dreaded machines I've ever worked on. Uh, my father had taken it to a, a, a semi-local shop and they did a horrible job. They took the motor that had a Kohler motor in it, put this Briggs and Stratton piece of garbage in it. It's, it's just, it doesn't fit right. It doesn't have any power. I took the spark plug out. There's a piece of piston ring coming. It's, you know, the motor's just shot. They took a perfectly good motor out of this thing and put this piece of crap in here. And, you know, I just, I just get upset thinking about it. So I'm constantly fighting with this thing. It, it does, it's designed to pick up leaves. It's a walker. If I didn't say that already. It has a magnesium impeller in here that, that mashes the leaves up and shoots them in here. When it's working right, it, it does a good job picking up leaves. But it's got all sorts of electrical problems. The fools that got in here did all sorts of crap. It's just, you know, the battery goes dead every 10 minutes, so you can start it two or three times, and anyway, it, it, need, it needs a new battery. But on top of that, it's got electrical issues, and it's got no compression. It just, anyway, needs a new motor. It's a very expensive machine, very expensive to fix, so all the parts are, you know, it's just a, just a real pain. On top of it being difficult to work on, it's dangerous to work on. The, the hydro, I need a new cylinder here, and I will order one of those probably. But even when that cylinder's there, this thing has a propensity to fall down and want to cut your arms off. And th there's quite a bit of weight. I've got a stick propping it up now. It's just dangerous as hell working on it. And every time you need to, well, in this case, I need to charge the battery so I can get it started again, hopefully. And I don't want to cut my arms off or have my dad have to fool around with this thing later on. So what I'm going to do is, is build a little safety standoff rod, like a hood prop, that will go from here to there. And... You can brace this thing up without having to worry about it coming down on you, so let me work on that. So not the most complicated thing in the world. It's just a hood prop that will sit there and get a sorry and get a pin that drops through. The pin will latch over like that. So that shouldn't go anywhere. And then this is this I didn't measure this. This just got I got lucky. But there were two holes in the back of the machine. And they happen to line up perfectly with the holes I drilled. I don't know how that worked out. And then I have two of these pins that will drop through and hold this on the back of the machine so you can carry it around with you everywhere. Because it doesn't really stow, I couldn't swing it forward and and not have some sort of impingement from the bolt and nut. It, there's just too much going on to, to have it swing back and forth. So this will keep that prop rod with the machine. So hopefully that works pretty good. While I wait for that to charge, I'm going to go ahead and keep cleaning up the shop. I, my little brother was cleaning out of the attic, the rafters, and found this Zillis vise. Yeah, I'd love to test it out. New in the box. And the way this bench is designed, it doesn't have a relief for it to pinch down on. So I'm going to have to find another workbench. Save this for another day, but this should be a pretty neat. I'm going to do some research, and maybe there's some videos on it. I, I don't exactly understand exactly. Um, well, I keep saying exactly. I, I don't at all understand how this is the whether this is strictly woodworker. I, I need to read the book. I guess is where I'm going with that. That'll be for a different episode, but I'll put that on the shelf for to do stuff. But while I've already done this, but I'm going to go ahead and patch in a video. Now, a time lapse of, of tying a knot. I had found an interesting photo of my grandfather, and I'll put that photo in now. And in the back behind him, you'll see what I what I believe is some oxyacetylene hoses that he's tied together in what the, what's called a chain sinet, sinet, I think. And let me show you what it looks like. This is a bunch of I don't know how many feet of rope this is, 250 or 300 feet of rope, and this is one inch, 12 plat rope. Pretty good stuff. I'm sort of a rope fanatic. I have you know, lots, lots, lots of rope. Um, you can see I've got more rope hanging there. 
a block and tackle, five to one block and tackle here with, that's probably 200 feet of rope. And that's 450 feet of one and a quarter inch mega braid, 12 plate, uh, that's, they don't call it rope, they call it line, but that's dock or mooring line for a, for a mega yacht. Got that at a flea market one time, years ago. So since I have this, you know, affinity for, for ropes, uh, being able to store them, this, this is not my favorite way to do it. However, just because I saw that picture, I figured I would, you know, tie this one up this way just for sport and give me a reason to include it in the channel and maybe show you something new. It's It can be a... Some people like to use it to tie extension cords. I don't particularly like it because it leaves, depending on the cord, if it's real supple like SOO cable or whatever, the really good extension cords uh, that don't develop a memory, this is a good type of knot or type of, of, of storage mechanism or means. However, if, if it's a cheap orange cord that tends to develop hoops in it and whatnot, you, you, this isn't a great method. So it just depends on what you're working with. So I look. I'll include some time lapse of me tying this together. So, I think today's my lucky day. Between those two bolt holes lining up and, and me finding this piece of metal, uh, you know, this is star. I should buy a lottery ticket today. This trailer is a is a Rubbermaid fiberglass reinforced little yard cart. It has got to be 20 years old. It is outstanding. It, it just is the toughest thing. I, I used to be partial to it, plastic things, so I said, eh, you know, it's plastic. Who wants that piece of junk? That this is the best thing ever. Metal is just garbage compared to this this fiberglass reinforced plastic. So it's a great trailer, and the, you know, ironically, the sorry for the light, it keeps shifting in and out. So the problem at hand, if you can see that, probably. So the problem is this tongue is rusting off. Luckily, that other piece of metal I have is the perfect size for this. So let me hack this off and weld on a new piece, and maybe make it a little longer. That'll make it easier to back up. So. Alright, so there it is. The, the welding didn't go as good as I was hoping this time, but it's on there. And a little bit of extra room on there should make it easier to back up, so hopefully that works. But Alright, one more thing and then I'll end this video. Whew, it's getting hot. So, early in March is my birthday, and my older brother got me two gifts. Look at this. A Billings toolbox. Look at that. Still got the original decal on the inside. This thing is in great shape. And, look at this. This is a Craftsman toolbox. And, oh, set of punches. Full set of alphabetical punches. And this one's been painted on the inside. It looks like it's got a clear coat or some sort of shellac on the outside. But anyway, very cool gifts. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate that. These these will serve me well. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to show them off because they're really cool. So that's it for my video today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope you're having a good weekend.